Sunday, September 18, Unforgettable. Read Mark chapter 14, verses 1 to 11. What two stories are intertwined here, and how do they play off of one another? Let's read Mark 14, beginning at verse 1. Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages, and the money given to the poor and they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money, so he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Mark 14 verse 1 indicates that the Passover was two days away. This meeting probably occurred on either Tuesday night or Wednesday of that week. The religious leaders had a plan and timing. They just need a means to accomplish their goal. It will come from a surprising quarter. This passage is the fifth sandwich story in Mark. We saw the first one in Lesson 3. The story of the plot against Jesus is linked with a story of a woman who anoints Jesus' head with precious perfume. Two parallel characters do opposite actions, displaying an ironic contrast. Who the woman is here is not revealed by Mark. Her amazing gift to Jesus stands in contrast to Judas's perfidy in betraying his Lord. She is unnamed, he is named as one of the twelve. The value of the gift is listed. His price is only a promise of money. No specific reason is given for why she does this, but the guests at the dinner are appalled by what they consider a grand waste of close to a year's wages in pouring out the perfume on Jesus. Jesus, however, interposes in her defence and says that what she has done will be included in gospel proclamation throughout the world as a memorial to her. It is unforgettable. Indeed, all four gospels tell this story in one form or another, probably because of Jesus' words memorialising her deed. Judas's betrayal also is unforgettable. Mark implies that his motive was greed. The Gospel of John makes it explicit in John chapter 12, verses 4 to 6. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Mark contains a play on the word good in order to illustrate that two different motives or plots are in play in these stories. Jesus calls the woman's action good or beautiful in verse 6 of Mark 14. He says, you can always do good for the poor in verse 7. In verse 9, he calls her deed part of the good news gospel. In verse 11, Judas looks for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. What this play on words suggests is that the plot of men to destroy the Messiah will actually become part of the gospel story because 
it brings to fruition the will of God in giving His Son for the salvation of humanity. And so to finish the day, how does Romans 8.28 help explain what will happen here? Romans 8.28 And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember... God is always faithful.